Hello everyone, my name is Paweł Rymsza and today I will show you how to use Lightning with Lumen. So let's get started. So we have a fairly simple setup as seen with a table and chairs. So if we go into ambience, render and then we switch on Lumen, we can see the difference with Lightning. So as you can see we are missing a bit of sunlight and probably a bit of light in the back of our room. However the general feel is pretty nice. So let's analyze what will happen in most cases. Usually what we see is people adding a lot of small emissive materials like spotlights and are hoping to get realistic results. So let's show what will happen. First I'm gonna add a box, go into emissive material and set it to 1. So we can see at our chair that the box is actually casting light so we can clearly see on the chair it's working nice. However what will happen if we scale it down 10 times and let's increase the emissiveness 100 times. So this is what will happen. Usually you will get a lot of artifacts because the light source is very small and the emissive material is simply not leading the scene. You can also clearly see at our chair even if we switch it off or on there is absolutely no difference. So lesson learned. Let's try a different road. So let's go into our image example and here I'm using Sun. So this is a pretty simple setup, exactly same. The only difference is that in my Sun settings I simply rotated the Sun so it's lighting our scene just by bouncing off our floor. And that's actually working pretty nicely. So there is no need to change anything else. The things which you might also want to look at are located in camera tab. Here we have setting called local exposure and here I'm using highlight reduction at 1. If we switch it off or reduce it to 0, you can clearly see that sun is actually overblowing our wood texture. So if we don't use that setup, you will get some spots which are totally overblown. However, if we go into Shadow Boost and you will try to go very high with Shadow Boost, you will completely evaporate any kind of small shadows. So it's actually not very good to go high with Shadow Boost and Lumen. It's better to just make image slightly brighter, but not remove shadows altogether. And as last part, to make it look more cinematic, consider going higher focal length. I'm using 50 in this example, however, look what will happen if we put it back to 18. It suddenly stop looking that cinematic. So actually focal length is also playing a major part in the, uh, in the final look. And the last part in FX tab, you can also play with contrast, go above 50 to like 60 to make those shadows pop even more. And this is a first setup, so we are basically using our sun and nothing more. A second example, here we don't have sun, so sun is set to zero. However, I'm using a fairly strong HDRI setup and the way it's uh, it's placed is just a single color so I don't have a sky I'm just using a single bluish uh, map and intensity at 4 so we don't really have any direct sunlight instead we are using more like an ambient light of atmosphere and this is pretty nice in modern looking kind of colder types of interiors where you want to create that kind of 
very bright feel. So this is a setup number two. As far as camera goes, nothing really changes. So I'm also using highlight reduction at one, shadow boost at zero, and pretty high focal length. In FX, you can also go anywhere above 50 to 60 or even a bit higher to create even more contrasty shadows. Okay, and this is a second scene. Here we can have more real life experience. So we have a small table with chairs, TV screen. So this is a simple living room. And let's focus on lighting first. We have four spotlights located at the top. All those are pretty low at intensity, but they are actually lighting the whole interior quite a lot. So this is important source of light. As far as emissive material go, it's set to one. So it's important to not go higher, to not get any kind of noise. Then we have a second light source, which is omnidirectional light located at the back and it doesn't really affect the scene all that much. And then we have two neon lights which are located at the top and at the bottom. If you switch those off, you can see those are actually giving a bit of light to the ambience, however, not critical. And then the last one, which is area light, located more or less at the window area this one is just to give some extra reflections on the table so it's not mandatory it's just something you might try so those are all the lights if we switch everything off you can see the difference is huge so those lights are actually very important and it's important to have multiple light sources to offset a generally dark shadows. All right, so now let's talk about settings of the scene. So I'm using sun at 10. If we lower it down to zero, you can see it only affects the exterior because we don't have the sun coming inside of our room. So it's mostly for the trees which are, which are outside. Then as far as HDRI settings, we have an intensity set to one and I'm using a plain color, single uh, bluish tone just to lit up a scene evenly everywhere so there are no uh, hard shadows and the sun is basically just for the look of the vegetation here. And those are all the settings. Then we have a camera, uh, camera settings, local exposure, highlight reduction at one and shadow boost at zero. So exactly same settings as before. And as far as focal length at 35, you can always set it higher to get even more cinematic feel. And the last part is FX settings here basically we crank up contrast to get more contrasty feel and get a bit more punch and that's it thank you very much and have a great day